Welcome back to the Wednesday Night War. So, me and Primetime, you know, uh, Q-Flow and Lady Sketch have set aside for this one. While me and Primetime uh, figure out who won between NXT and AEW this week. So, you know, uh, Primetime had a little problem with the main event of AEW. Well, we'll, I can't wait to get to that. <coughs> I, 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 as soon as I see the live, I was like, I can't wait for you to talk about this. So, when it comes to AEW, when it comes to NXT... So a NXT was a, a pretty decent show, actually. Uh, we started off. Decent. Yeah, we we've seen Finn Balor start starting off a match with Fabian Eichner from Imperium, and uh, they still. Fabian Eichner does not get his just due, but I doesn't. understand. Cause I I just gotta tell the story. I gotta tell the story every yeah. single time. He was at a live event I saw, and he was facing somebody named Stacy Irvin Jr. Yeah. Which he, he didn't get that much time. Stacy Irvin Jr.'s finisher was a moonsault. Uh huh. This man did a moonsault. Fabian Eichner caught him in the brain buster position and brought him down with a brain buster. One of the greatest things I've ever seen live. I don't understand why they never let him do it. He always do it the front way without the back way like that. But oh, okay. After he did, I was like, oh, this guy has, first, to, has to be on TV. First off, the only other person that, that can do that is Cesaro. <laughs> well, hey. Yeah, so I was saying. I want to so, see Cesaro do that too. Exactly. So, hey, well, the, the, him and Finn Balor had, had a really good match. It was on the outside. He, uh, Finn Balor shotgun drop kicks uh, one of the other members of Imperium. It's not Alexander Wolf, it's the other guy. It's Marcel Bartel. Yeah, Marcel Bartel. It was also, it was also uh, good too. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, who, uh, drop kicked him do the, uh, <laughs> Do, do, do the, the barricade, uh, and that that whole it collapsed. It, it looked so much sinister so, when there's no crowd in there. So I just got so so is is a full set okay with them just wrestling there? Like they I, cool with that? Bro, I don't know what shady deals <laughs> WWE has going on right now, but uh, they probably have to be. Yeah, I guess. You know. No, ain't nobody at the college no more, so I guess y'all can do whatever y'all want. Bring all the germs y'all want. Yeah, exactly. You know? well, we just gonna bring the WWE germs here. We, it's only gonna be the NXT guys here. Uh, Finn Balor defeats Fabian Eichner with a nineteen sixteen, and then uh, has a message for Walter on the ramp outside of the uh, uh, at the end of the match. Uh, Zia Lee takes on Aaliyah. They played up the storyline of when Zia Lee broke her nose, and then now Aaliyah attacked her in the in the back that she couldn't qualify a Leah attack you seriously she broke her nose so that she can get a nose job <laughs> yes <laughs> and uh she attacks Zia Lee so she couldn't be in the money uh not the money but the ladder qualifying match so now we get our Zia Lee versus Leah match you know Leah has gotten better since when I first seen her but Leah is still Leah and Zia Lee is coming along home in her own right yeah, uh, I don't, like, Aaliyah seems like she's just there, just to be there. Like, she don't get no higher or no lower, she's just there. Yeah, she uh, she has peaked. <laughs> I think that's what it is. She has really <laughs> peaked. Uh, so, Aaliyah, uh, Zia Lee picks up the win and defeats Aaliyah. Uh, now we have uh, the first match for the, the Cruiserweight <laughs> tournament that we have, where we have... Group A and Group B. So now what the thing is, each member is going to face each member from their group. Whoever gets the highest score wins from that group. I was like, okay. I forgot what that reminds me of, but this is a different kind of a way of a tournament. Uh, was it not the Bound for Glory for TNA? The Bound for Glory had their point system, but I don't know if they had Group A, Group B, stuff like that, though. Nah, they had Group A, Group B. They just had, like, out of 10 people. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So we had a kill to Zai take, taking on Swerve, Isaiah Swerve Scott. Which, I thought the, right, the wrong person won, but the, the wrong person did me. win. I, I'm not gonna lie to you because see now I'm like the way I look at it, it's like okay, there's three people in each group. I'm like if you lose one match, then you automatically seem like you out because he got two more matches to go. So he, if he if he win both, he'll be two and one. But if a kill to Zai wins the next two, then he automatically wins. You know so. But yeah, was, but I mean, I really do think Swerve deserves a push or something. Like this guy is awesome. He he is awesome, and this 
was another awesome match by him and Kikiro Tozawa. I don't know if he did it in this matchup, but when he does that, that step on your arm a lot, he 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 breaks your arm thing. That oh yeah. god, that bother. That is that that makes I my think, skin crawl. I think that should only be like a pay per view type of thing or a big match type of thing. But hey, you I know, agree. Whatever. Yeah, but Kikiro Tozawa does pick up the win here, so he has one point in Group B. Tegan Knox is, is has been fed up with uh, Raquel Gonzalez, so now she finally gets her one on one. So Tegan Knox taking on Raquel Gonzalez. The match was a big man look low on match, but uh, she she still needs work. But you know, uh, yeah, obviously, but I was just saying, but you know, for trying to play, you know, the big woman thing, it wasn't that bad. Uh, Dakota Kai's on the outside, but then Shazi Blackheart comes out. And because for distraction, distraction, Raquel's trying to choke slam her on the apron, but Tegan Knox rolls her up and lays on her legs, and then picks up the win. So that means we get a tag team match, player <laughs> of Shazi Blackheart and uh, Tegan Knox taking on Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai. Pretty much, uh, crazy, sinister, creepy Dexter Loomis takes on Tay. <laughs> Tayuda Smiles? Tahuti, Tahuti. Tahuti! Tahuti Miles. Uh, yeah. You gotta I'm, get that ooh, it's Tahuti. You gotta get that ooty. Oh, Tahuti. <laughs> you know, because, see, that's why I did Chris Jericho. Who? Tahiti. <laughs> Tahati. <laughs> that's what Jericho would say. Uh, there we is. So Dexter Loomis obviously picks up the win here with that creepy stare. They are trying to give him a push as well. I mean, he he got the creep, he got the creep look down pat. I'm sorry. I swear, he, if they if they have him do a segment with somebody, he's in their room or something in their house. That just be, uh, God. It so will creepy. be. It will. It it, it will be, creep, bro. Just don't do no. Just don't do do no women. Don't do that. Don't don't be Samuel Shaw again. You know what I'm saying? Just. Yeah, what are you doing in my in my room with my teddy bears and stuff? Exactly. <laughs> don't don't do that. But he but he, he was a creep. You seen the main well the main event match? He was a creep. So we don't know what he they had, had planned for him. Um. Then uh, so Velveteen Dream is back in his like dream lounge. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he comes out and uh, was cut a promo at Adam Cole, but then Finn Balor creeps up behind and uh, because. He made a comment of saying that Adam Cole was the greatest NXT champion that NXT has ever saw. Of course, now, people may uh, have a little argument about that because people say Finn Balor is the greatest NXT champion that NXT has ever saw. And I, I have to, I have to ask you, what do you think, real quick? I think, I think. Uh, oh, this is a hard question. I'm gonna say Balor because. The way that NXT was set up, it was, it was. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm gonna just say Balor. Like NXT has a lot of different people at the top now. While when Balor was up there, it was either the, you know two or three people that you would see that can win the title. But now it's just like they can assert anybody to win the title. But I don't know that Balor run is just so special to me. Uh, it is the, the Balor because see, I think. Like first of all, we're not gonna say Bo Dallas. We're not gonna say Adrian Neville, aka Pac. But well, I, he had a good run, but it just wasn't uh, long enough. You no, know, he did yeah, have a good run though. It wasn't I long enough. I felt as though that it could have. Sami Zayn had the potential, but Sami Zayn kept, kept getting it one injury or two, just to, to, to hold hold the title yeah. long. Kevin Owens, give, I said the Kevin Owens reign was was good. Yeah, but it wasn't as long as Balor's was, and uh, yeah, you're right. And I was like, but everything he did during his reign was like he was on Raw beating a, beating the U.S. champion John Cena yeah. with the title. He was in like four different feuds at the same time. Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> so it was hot. But I, I had to go with Balor. I'm not calling it. I'm not going to be calling it for Adam Cole just yet. But Adam Cole has had the matches though. So uh, yeah. Balor takes, uh, you know. Pre, uh, problem with that, so uh, Dream has no problem with challenging Finn Balor, so which should be an awesome match. Very, very awesome. Uh, Matt Riddle and a mystery party taking on the Undisputed Era uh, for the NXT Tag Championships because since... Oh. Uh, huh? 
I was gonna say before this happened, I was so excited to see who his partner was gonna be. Yeah, I, I was curious because as people we know, once we are still in a pandemic and a lot of people are not allowed to fly, there's no flying out the country or in the country. So Pete Dunn is stuck in his home country. Or, yeah, or, or, so, so surprisingly, this superstar is not stuck there either, but, you know, yeah. whatever. Who are you talking about? It's the same thing with Rhea Ripley. So I'm just like, okay. So uh, <clears throat> the person that comes out is Timothy Thatcher. For Th- Thatcher. Th- Th- Thatcher, excuse me, comes out for Matt Riddle. Don't give me If you don't know him, he in uh, British wrestling was the co-leader. Of, okay, Imperium was technically a group, and the British wrestling was Walter, Timothy Thatcher, Timothy Thatcher, and Marcel Bartel. Okay. And then I guess his contract was still whatever, and they came over, then they added Fabian Eichner and Alexander Wolf. People kept saying he was going to come back and be in the group and replace Wolf, but looks like he's just probably going to do his thing for now until after quarantine, I guess. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like a Sawyer Fortune thing? The, mm, Where they got rid of... Yeah, kind, because kinda. He, remember, Sawyer Fortune was part of that part of Sandy, and then they, yeah. they missed up, got rid of, they put Bar Kelly and Dame in because he was out yeah. injured. Yeah, maybe, maybe something like that. Or, uh, I'm more say, hmm, I don't know what to, what to compare it to right now. Okay. Well, yeah, well, yeah, something so, like that. But you know what, though? He's pretty good, though. Yeah, he's he is very good. And he, 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 he's built, like, stiff. Like, he got, he got some high muscular shoulders and everything. And I was like... I was he's like, a very uh, scary-looking human being. He is. And speaking of scary-looking human beings... As his match goes on, in the corner up there by the tight trial, you just see Dexter Loomis staring in the shadows <laughs> at the match. I'm like, he has no picks, but he's just, just staring. I'm like, this man is a key. He's I told you, he got that creep character down packed. <laughs> yeah, it make, seems almost too real. It it, it almost too angry. To the point, like, I see y'all like, yo, bro, I'm stabbing you. I'm so stabbing you. Um... Uh, but after after a while, uh, God, what was happening? So uh, they win, they do win. They beat the undisputed there. But like, can it be a thing where like he gets a different tag team partner every week? That'd be kind of cool. Like, who's my new, uh, who's my new bro? Yeah, it's like because he, him, and uh, Pete Dunne are still champions. So like, they don't win the championship. They're not a champion. They just end in the match. Exactly. You know, be, I think that'd be a cool thing. That'd be cool. I mean, it' gonna be Dan Matha, Chester's Dan Matha. <laughs> well, yeah. It probably be like a uh, Oni Lorgan or somebody. You know, somebody that we. I'm on somebody that'd be a good fit to be fun to watch a couple matches, but who knows what they'll do? You're right. Tommaso Champa is backstage, and he's about to uh, claim that. Johnny Gorgano, as much as he hates to say it, was the better man to finally end this feud, to put it to rest. And uh, but he he uh he he did it. He said it. He said Gorgano was the uh at the grueling match he was the better man. And um, after that he was attacked. He was he was on camera, but just camera he was attacked. The camera was laid down, and you just see Chopper's lifeless body is laying there. And coming up to Chopper, we see um, what's his name? Killer Cross. His name was Killer Cross, but I think they changed it to like Carrion Cross or Karen Cross or oh, something. Okay, well, we see Killer Cross come there because he was in the, that that car that that you spotted last week when Gorgano yeah, left. Yeah. And uh, who, who was the girl that's with him? Scarlet Bordeaux. Yeah, we didn't see her, but we did see her heels. Yeah. Yeah. So. That, 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 that was pretty cool. We also got, I, I didn't mention this earlier, what was that um debut video of that new luchador that's coming? I don't know who that is. Like, I don't even, I never even heard of him before. Oh, okay. Goodness. Well, yeah, well. I, I, like, he, usually he, when they bring people in, I hear about like Angel Garza and all them I heard, but this dude I never heard of before. Uh-huh. 
Well, that was NXT, so now it's time to move on to AEW Dynamite. So, let's go. Uh, so, uh, Jay the Save Roberts is opening up the show again, talking about. Uh, hey, he, he said, I'm bored. I ain't got nothing to do on quarantine, so I'm going to send y'all so these I'm, videos. I'm going to send y'all a, a creepy ass promo, which Jay Roberts is good at. And obviously, that Lance Archer is, you know, doing a little and little each day to get closer and closer to Cody. So, uh, no disrespect, but he got Coco Ban in the night in the championship tournament. But Coco Ban is not going to be, you know, no, 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 no task for Lance. Definitely Archer. not. If they would have had Coco Ban to beat this man, that would have just he should have just quit wrestling altogether. Yeah, he gives cool. He says, "Listen to me, or regret it. It's your choice." So we start off with over the match, which is uh, they call the Murder Hawk Monster Lance Archer versus. <laughs> Boom, boom, Kirk, Coke Cabana. And you know, honestly, for Coke Cabana, he made this a competitive matchup, actually. Yeah. I, I know yeah, he was going to squash Coke Cabana. I know he was going to squash him, but he didn't. I didn't, I didn't think he was going to squash him, but I thought Coke was going to at least get his probably Superman punch and his uh his elbow or whatever, then his Superman pin or whatever. The little stupid yeah. looking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I know this guy's too, but I, I do like when Coke Cabana coming off the top rope. And then he he see they robbed the way he still like splashes on them. I was like, you know, he made that move kind of cool. Then a dry start doing it with the moon salt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I was like, but you know, dang, I thought that, I thought that was uh. It, just a sign. Is it just you? Does Coco Banner's like body type look weird to you? It looks like an out of shape retired wrestler. No, but, I'm saying cause, like his arms are very very skinny. His legs are very very skinny. And then like you got like a kind of a gut that don't match your body it's like big show yeah bro that's look this is no disrespect to anybody and this ain't a racial comment that's how white folks gain weight look <sighs> I, I don't get it when if you see like a fat white guy right mm-hmm. his body in the middle it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a potato like they're big in the middle and they got these skinny arms and legs you're like what but when you see black people a black guy their, their weight is like all evenly like they're fat everywhere you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. Fat the stomach, fat the arms, fat the legs. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't get it. It's like, like we shift weight differently. I don't know. I, I don't know. But Coco Man, he's not a fat guy, but he is a, a little bit of a thicker guy. But uh, Lance Archer hits him with uh, the reverse Razor's Edge. Yeah, I forgot what he called it. He called it the uh, the um, dark, the dark... I forgot. Uh, <sighs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, is it called the, the the blackout? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, blackout. The blackout. All right. Uh, so he picks up the win here. Uh, then we uh, so now they're trying to build build this main event between an empty arena match between John Moxley and Jack Hager or Hager. Uh, so we 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 we, we get Taz. Uh, who's who's giving his two cents? People from ESPN, like they they going all Which around. Need it. Yeah, I'm just saying. So they're making this. This is a big, big time matchup. Uh, but then we we get uh Doctor Britt Baker was out next, going up against DMD. DMD. Uh, versus Mrs. Thick, the golden one to <laughs> save the golden. I'm like, I know you a jobber, but you thick. You know what I'm saying? That's uh, that's, that's like a. I think one of the best women on that roster for that reason is um Jamie Hayter, if you remember who that is. No, I don't. Ah, uh, okay. Who is she? she? Yeah, she's uh she she she's been on a couple episodes, but uh yeah yeah if you if you know who that is, guys, y'all y'all know. Oh man, look. I was like, I knew y'all hit a job. If, if she suffers from the Brandy Rose thing, she can't stop smiling in the ring. This match wasn't really a match. Britt Baker just beats her down, puts her teeth on the on the bottom apron, and it gives her the, the, the curb stop kick while her teeth's on the bottom rope. And but it's like she, the girl was smiling as she was doing. It. I'm just like, come on now. Yeah, but well, she's been on a couple of like uh, dark episodes too. I mean, she's going to be something in the future. But right now we need her the job, so I mean I get you. you gotta, you gotta get your feet wet. Uh, Mike Goldberg from <laughs> nah, Bellator okay. MMA gives his prediction about the main event, and then 
the one of the best segments of the night. The bubbly brunch. Yes. Bruh, the bubbly This shirt probably is sold out already. Yeah, yo, I need a bubbly bunch shirt. With the inner circle. Uh talk so they're all self quarantine. They're doing the social distancing. They're all at their house. And they, they talk to uh Santana and Ortiz in the house. And you see Sammy Guevara doing different works out, you know, pumping the iron. You see uh Jack Hagger out there with his kids. Uh, talking about you know uh, how you know he's gonna be he's gonna be Moxley, and then you got Jericho who is on the electric stove frying one egg with a nonstick pan with a metal spatula. You don't do that. Pour orange juice on the stove. Well, it's still on the stove in the glass. Uh, I I just thought this whole segment was you know very last and it was very. I was like I I don't want the end to end at all. Definitely not. I don't. Uh, but then, and speaking of that, as you're coming out, uh, Jericho's on there talking about how we got next matchup. We get Suge D, a.k.a. Pineapple Pete. Versus <laughs> Pineapple Pete. The, the Spanish guy, Sammy Guevara. And Jericho was on the commentary, and he was hilarious for this match. Talking about Shivani. It's not a Spanish guy. There, how, there's no multiple guys. There's one Spanish guy, and it's Sammy Guevara. So, uh, first of all, Shug D, the way he rolled in the ring, rolled all the way across the roll down, and then I was like, okay, he's one of them comedy wrestlers. You know? Yeah, he's one of them No Way Jose type people. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, I think he wrestled a little bit better, though. I mean, he's not on the cheeseburger level, but uh, I was like, what the fuck is going on? So, uh, <laughs> Sammy has been toying with, toys with him the, the whole match. He finally beats him, and then... He says, you know, I, I can go I can go longer, I can do more rounds of that, but I'm letting anybody know that I'm gonna beat the shit out of Darby Allen. Because mm-hmm. he, he said said on the microphone. And then Darby, uh he's, he's about to beat up some Shook uh Shook D some more. Darby Allen comes out to the save the rescue and then he, he uh runs back I mean, to the blocking room. Didn't know he, I wouldn't have came out, but you know, I guess Darby's better than better than us, I guess. I guess so. Uh Big uh, John McCath- uh, McCarthy of Bellator gives his predictions. And now we got a, the super bad Kip Sabian with Penelope Ford going up against Ooh. Chuck Taylor with freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. And no Trent this week? <laughs> no, no, no Trent this week at all. Uh, Jimmy Havoc's on the outside in the audience. So uh, Penelope Ford gets up on the ring to try to. Uh, Ooh, yeah, Lord have mercy. Uh, Tries to taunt Chuck Taylor. It's not working. And then, uh, as, uh, uh, Kip Sabian gets up, gets distracted by Fresh and Squeeze Orange Cassidy trying to, <laughs> <laughs> trying to show, I thought that was funny. But, uh, Jimmy Havoc comes out from the crowd, beats up Orange Cassidy, gives him a DT on the floor, which distracts, uh, Chuck Taylor, which gives Penelope Ford a chance to do the Hurricane Rana. To Chuck Taylor and then uh, Kip Sabian picks up the win, and uh, it looks like Jimmy Havoc may be giving a temporary alliance with them. I mean, that would be a weird pairing, but this whole Kip Sabian thing is is uh is weird. We're they supposed to tell us they telling us that he's super bad. He's supposed to be this just this super bad dude, but like he's like a like a I don't want to say a nerd, but like. His tattoos, his interest gear, his finisher is all Harry Potter related. He's supposed to be super bad. Oh, I know Penelope Ford is. Well, she yeah. was the bad girl first. But, you, know, okay. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, now, uh, so we have Justin Law versus the chairman, Sean Spears. This match is nothing. Sean Spears doesn't take off his shirt for this matchup. He just. I mean, took... I don't think he's going to be taking off his shirt for a couple matchups. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised why I don't know why he still wear this. I don't know why he don't wear the tights. He's, he's still wearing them. First of all, when Sean Spears came in, there, I didn't understand what his gimmick was. He had he had like the crazy contacts, and then he had you know uh, Tully coming out there with him, and then now he, he's back to just doing like Ty Dillinger shit. I um, wish they would let him be just Ty Dillinger, like <laughs> come out do the ten, be a face, yeah, and uh, embrace it because he'd definitely get a lot of pop. But you know, yeah. I guess he said he wanted to try his hand at being a heel. 
I guess, and then once again, you know, WWE has the Sean Spears. I mean, the, the, the Ty Dillinger name, don't they? He can still say the perfect ten or perfection, or he can still hold up the ten. Oh. Uh, uh. So now it's time for the main event: an empty <sighs> arena, no holds barred match for the world championship. Jack Jake Hager taking on John Moxley. You know. Jim Ross will commentate by himself, which which made you all the need. By himself. By himself, which Who made prime thought time. Thought this was all. a good idea. He wasn't bad for the whole thing. He he. No, let's be Who real. Thought Jim Ross for forty five minutes by himself <laughs> was a good idea. Was it Cody? Was it Kenny? Was it the Bucks? Was it Tony? I need answers. It probably was. Uh, they do go out to do out the uh the area right there. Jim Ross has the line where he says, "Why do they need security relatives here?" You know, saying there's nobody here. Good point. Uh, they go up the stairs for a little bit. He does a, a figure four to Jake Hager's legs in in, a, in one of the standing bars from the seats, and uh, they come back to the ring. They get a, a chair out. Uh. Not much is really done with the chair, to be honest with it's, you. It's so weird. Jim Ross probably could have had the best commentary of his match. I still would have been annoyed because it was him saying it. Damn, bro. Because, uh, man, it's just... Oh, oh. Yeah. New Japan and watching New Japan has soured me on Jim Ross. And then watching him AEW really soured me on, more on Jim Ross. So, um, sorry. Well, he's still one of the greatest, but just not now. You're right. Uh, uh, Did Moxley, you know I have a podcast called J- Grilling Jr. too? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, he had to fit that in there too. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, he, he runs head first. Moxie runs head first into the chair, set up in the corner. Uh, Harry tries to pin him, but then he kicks out. He hits him in the in the ankle with the steel chair, goes for the ankle lock on Moxie. We count taking it down Hager and puts him in a submission, but he gets up and then uh. They go back to knocking the blows, but uh, ha- uh, was it Hager uses hits a low blow on Mox, and then uh, slugs a chair at Hager's face that drops him onto the chair with the paradigm shift. Paradigm shift. And John Moxley covers Hager's and pins him for the three count. Okay, I have a couple a couple feelings here. Number one. Okay. This match was all right. I mean. If your match has Jake Hager in it to begin with, it's gonna only be all right. Yeah, because I, like I said, I'm not a Jack Swagger Jake Hager guy. I'm not. I don't care if he's a legit fighter in, in Bellator. I don't care. I'm just not. In, it never been in his match. Number two, they said it's an empty arena match. After we just seen Ciampa and Gorgano like literally brawl, pull up the apron, show the wood. Have uh uh all kinds of weapons. They go out to the t- to the si- to the semi truck. There's nobody there to stop them. This did not. This did not even meet. Hey, they gotta, <laughs> they gotta keep the set the same for the next uh taping for in a couple minutes. It, it's exactly. I was like, so that that right there, it didn't have a chance to breathe. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I mean, I thought Jake Hager was better when he was just the muscle and he didn't have to wrestle. He just beat people up and that's it yeah but he had to do full moves and put the string together moves or nothing yeah well now he has to do that i mean he's not a bad wrestler he's just not he's not he, bad but now it seems like he's been wrestling almost every week since his debut when yeah. it took him like eight months to even wrestle exactly so so now uh it's like i said it it failed to compare to the compared to the gorgano and chopper matchup that they had it almost with the same amount of time and i was like this for an empty arena match they did not. They did not excel the, the use of the empty arena, so the match was boring. They definitely did not excel that commentary either. It, yeah, it, 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 and, it, and it was not that many weapons. I was like, y'all really, y'all really trying to have Hager in like a match match with Moxley right now? Like, where are the weapons? Where are the spots? Where are the things? Because they go up to forward and back. It's like you, you look. You gotta have to be if you're gonna do an empty arena match with no audience, obviously. And so no holes barred. You you got to bring something to it. It wasn't that great. So, what is your rating for NXT or AEW? Who won this week? I 
I'm gonna say NXT won this week. NXT won this week, and did they won legit in the rankings? This yeah, week. they won uh, by um, I want to say more, like a thousand or maybe a little more than a thousand. Yeah, cause I'll say that that main event did, did it hit. I mean, I watched it to see the Shaq show afterwards, but yeah, I was way more into NXT this past week. But you guys can post down who what what, what show did you guys like? But now we're going to move on for to finish out the rest of the podcast. <laughs> 